Yay, look who it is. It's <laughs> Alice. Anyways. Hi, guys. To all of our craze viewers out there, um, you are here for an exclusive interview with the one and only Alice. Um, if you have checked out our interview with her last year, she was actually featured in one of our KCON interviews. So for those who are getting to know Alice for the very first time, Alice, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hello, everybody. I am Alice. I am an R&B pop artist, uh, originally from the East Coast. My big thing within the industry is breaking stereotypes. So a lot of my experience growing up, which is commonly the Asian American experience, is kind of being doubted, looked upon, made fun of because of your race and stuff like that. Um, so for me, that did a lot of uh, discouraging when it came to, you know, wanting to pursue my dreams as an Asian American person in America, you know, not seeing that representation was very, mm, it, it was defeating for me because it felt like I, um, I could never make it myself because if other people couldn't, why couldn't I? I mean, how could I, right? But um, that's like the big thing I stand for because at this point, I'm like, go for your dreams, go for your goals. Like, I want to encourage people to do that. Um, and especially as like a strong Asian uh, female figure in the media, I think that a lot of times like we're stereotyped to be a certain thing and I want to prove everybody that we are tough, so let's not push it. <laughs> um, yeah, like aside from that, um, I am also like a model and a dancer. Um, so yeah, my big thing is putting that all into just one big package to send a message of, you know, empowerment, chasing your dreams, um, and hopefully elevating the Asian American voice. So that's my big thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, well... We it's been a while since we've last talked and yeah. caught up with you, but definitely you let us know that there's something happening very soon for you. You have a new single releasing yeah. at the end of the month. It is titled mm -hmm. Smoke It Out. Now, while I haven't personally listened to it yet, yet it'll be there. Um, <laughs> uh, could you talk about more about what Smoke It Out is and basically what was your inspiration as to why you decided to write and create smoke it out yeah absolutely so um originally it was supposed to be a song about covid uh i will to to, to track it backwards a little bit more after moody the ep that i released in january i was i was like spent i because i put a lot of effort a lot of time and a lot of money into that that after it released i was like and I really needed a break, um, like in every single way possible. Um, so then afterwards, all of a sudden COVID happens and I, I don't have any gigs or any jobs or anything. And I'm just at home. Mm -hmm. To be honest, in the beginning, I was very uh, kind of lifeless. Mm -hmm. um, typically, I'm, I function better on a very busy lifestyle. So it, I didn't like how much freedom I had and therefore my creativity was stumped. However, um, as the pandemic, you know, got deeper and deeper and, you know, more conversations were had, um, I think I just realized how apparent it is that our nation is so divided and um, it became very clear, you know, when people have such different loud opinions, like about masks, about staying at home, where did COVID begin? Is Chinese virus racist? Like everybody is, is divided right now. There's so much, there's so much negativity and conversation happening that way. So I wanted to write a song about that. Mm -hmm. So I did. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then um, the murders of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and Ahmaud Arbery were publicized. Um, so naturally, I wasn't going to release a song about COVID uh, <laughs> at right. that time. I wanted to be sensitive to all that was going on and also just, uh, you know, not be tone deaf and not put the spotlight on me when, like, at that point, it shouldn't have been at all. Um, 
So then after, you know, things died down a little bit, uh, I really wanted to release something or put my voice out there somewhere. I've been so vocal about, um, you know, these injustices and my, my support for Black Lives Matter. And um, I realized that the song about COVID actually very easily translated into a song um, about the divisiveness in this country, about how uh, there's so much performative allyship. It's like um, there's a, a lyric in the beginning of uh, of the song. It's oh my god. Oh, it's like self promotion. <laughs> I know mm. I had to like think about my own lyrics. It's like it's like people using this opportunity to kind of like make themselves look better. There's just a lot of commotion happening. Mm -hmm. um, so what I wanted to translate the song into was a message about that, but mm -hmm. also saying um, the hook is, can we just smoke it out? Can we smoke it out and chill? And uh, it dips into a little bit of like weed culture. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't smoke, but mm -hmm. I'm very much around uh, that scene because I mean if you live in LA you're kind of exposed to it very easily um and what I've noticed about it is it's very inclusive like, mm -hmm. just kind of like oh what's up bro what's your name and people are just smoking together it's like they don't care about what you look like or who you are how many followers you have nothing it's just kind of like it's very inclusive yeah. like a family almost mm -hmm. so um the way I wanted to communicate the song is like like why don't we do that why don't we smoke it out and just chill be mm -hmm. unified like come mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. um yeah so that was like the intention behind the song um there is you know a lot of frustration expressed in the verses but ultimately the message i want to send is like let's come together like just like they do in weed culture you know no um no divisiveness no judgment or prejudice but just human to human let's make it happen so, yeah. That's the song. Cool. So, like, how long did it take you to actually create this song? Like, I know that when it, like, break, if you can, break down your, if you can break down your process of what it is like to create a song, because I'm not in that, you know, realm. So, as somebody who is a singer and a songwriter, like, what is the process of you creating the, a song, like, Smoke It Out, or just your songs in general? Yeah, definitely. Well, this one did happen a little bit differently just because, um, the person who made the beat was actually not in town. So mm -hmm. typically, whoever makes like the, the track, the background music, music, um, you'll you'd work on it with them. But he mm -hmm. wasn't here. So mm -hmm. I was like, ah, crap. Uh, luckily, he made it like really solid as is, so I didn't have to touch anything on the track. Um, so for this particular track, I did it very differently. Mm -hmm. um, he sent me a beat. I loved it. Um, it's the same producer who worked on the song Playground with me uh, from the Moody EP. And um, so I wrote lyrics to it and my friend Samira helped me with like melodies and stuff. She's really good. Um, and then after I got like the lyrics and melody down for the beat, um, it was as simple as just getting it recorded <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, getting it mixed and mastered. Um, to be honest, it's usually more of like a team right. process. Like you're all in the studio together. You're all bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, this time around that couldn't exactly happen, but um, yeah, so it was very remote, mm -hmm. but to be honest, I kind of appreciated it cause I work better independently. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it was, it was, interesting but uh refreshing to mm -hmm. so we're definitely in the age where quarantine is having a lot of effects on people um yeah. and you you briefly mentioned that you know being in quarantine and having to be basically stuck at home you know at first it was you know dampening your you know your creative process mm -hmm. but now that you know seeing as we're going to be like this for quite some time still, unless people obviously can wear a mask, <laughs> you know? Um, 
you know, what kind of impact did it really have on your creative process? Like, and go looking at it at the beginning and up until now, you know, how, yeah. what, is it, what is it impacting on your creative process of just being an artist and somebody who's constantly creating and mm-hmm. just wanting to put your craft out there? Yeah. So, um, it's interesting because at the beginning of, of, uh, quarantine for me, it was officially like mid March. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was, yeah, I, I don't, I don't like not being busy. <laughs> right. I like having like something right after another and then another plant, another plant, and then I'm dead at the end of the night and then I pass out and then it starts over again. In the end, like that might almost be a self-sabotage pattern, but I, I really enjoy being busy and having packed schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, so honestly, in the beginning, it was very difficult for me to be so free because mm-hmm. I felt, I felt like, Honestly, the best way to put it, and this is the way I described it to my boyfriend, is like I felt like a loser. I was like, I have nothing to do. And then like I my brain was so fried from um the EP. And then also I just like I just wasn't feeling creative. I wasn't nothing it was almost like my brain was off. So mm-hmm. writing music was honestly very hard. Mm-hmm. Um also, you know, towards the beginning of quarantine, I didn't have as much uh, inspiration, you know, about the next track. I had ideas, but nothing that I truly felt so passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, But, well, (laughs) in the end, I am extremely passionate about um, equality, Mm -hmm. um, social justice, if you will. But honestly, just um, the message I want to send is like, we're all humans. Mm -hmm. No one is greater than the other. Right. A celebrity is no greater than a homeless person. I mm-hmm. swear we are all on the same level. Mm-hmm. These like class, race, sex, that's, that don't mean shit. We're all humans in the end. Um, so uh, I think because that's something I am so passionate about internally that, um, you know, that passion was unveiled as I saw how divided we were. Um, I think in the end, this song may never have happened if it weren't for quarantine (laughs) because, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe there wasn't something as, uh, as, as large of an event, um, Mm -hmm. to spark that idea in my head. But, you know, one thing, one of my black friends said to me was like, um, because I was hesitant about, you know, even making a song like this, mm-hmm. because you know, I, I'm like, I'm, I don't know, I'm Asian, I don't know, like where my voice fits in this conversation. It's kind of confusing. Right. Mm-hmm. But she encouraged me. She was like, No, please speak up for us, please. This is all we. This is what we're asking for. Um, and she did point out that, like, I'm an R and B pop artist, and you know that its roots are black music. So as somebody who, you know, loves black music and makes black music, I can't just be taking from their culture, but rather use my voice and my privilege to elevate it. Um, So that's kind of where, you know, the song was born within quarantine. So Mm -hmm. I feel even though, you know, at first it sucks and COVID sucks and, you know, (laughs) times are hard I am really grateful um for my experience through it because um I was able to create a song that I actually really love um that promotes something I truly believe in so yeah and we're working on the next one too so so I've picked up my pace from the beginning of uh this stay at home order (laughs) nice because my next question actually was if you can speak on it are there any other projects you've been working on since you know i know that smoke it out is coming up very soon but have there been other projects you've been working on whether it be in your music you know you said you're a model and everything are there any other projects out there that you know our readers and people who are watching this right now can look forward to yeah so um i booked a a beauty campaign that i was really excited about i was like I, I don't know if I can say the brand or not, but I'm just not going to just just in case. <laughs> but, Understandable. Um, yeah, but I was so proud of myself. I was like, oh my god, like I'm good enough. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited about it, and um, that frigging got pushed back. You know, a lot of things I was excited for got pushed back. Um, but thankfully, the good part about being an artist is that you can 
keep yourself busy and make create your own projects at all times mm -hmm. so yes the next one is in works um for this song smoke it out we only made like a visualizer just because um i didn't think a music video was necessary to be honest and i just i feel like the lyrics speak for themselves i didn't feel the need to make some like big cool project when the song the song speaks for itself mm -hmm. um the next one however it will definitely have a music video to it. And it's cool because it taps into uh, a side of my vocals that I haven't shown yet, which is like kind of prettier, more romantic and dreamy. Really? Yeah, so I'm really excited for that because usually all my music is like, fuck you, <laughs> like and more aggressive. But, oh my God, am I allowed to curse? I'm so sorry. But, <laughs> but, no um, yeah, but um, so it's it's cool, like being able to experiment with that. Um, what's interesting is that everything is happening remotely, mm -hmm. but um, I'm I'm not minding that so much mm -hmm. actually, because I'm a little bit introverted. So having like my space to work, uh, you know, while still working with other people has actually been uh, really cool. So yeah, stay tuned for the next one, and there will be a video to it. Ooh. Hey, you're hearing it here first, okay, everybody? That's so, right. <laughs> lately, there has been a shift of more online content available for fans. Um, what are your thoughts on this, and do you have any plans of your own to greet your fans and your followers or take them on a journey of your own creative process? I think I understand the question. Do uh, you mean, like, vlogs and live streams and stuff? Or it's just, like... You know, sometimes, like, is it, like, I guess, is there going to be more content available? I guess you would say vlogs or, like, live streams available so that you take your, uh, you know, because sometimes where we get to see you is on stage or yeah. at events, you know? And with all of these things that are happening in the world, you know, we don't have that platform where we can really greet, the, you know, the people who support us you know, on a personal level. So maybe like, is there like, what are your thoughts on that? And do you have plans of, of it for your own? Mm. Uh, maybe in the future. <laughs> so it's interesting because um, one thing I learned from my first two releases is don't, don't do things too quickly one right after another because <laughs> mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I didn't know my pacing. I didn't understand that at that point, mm -hmm. but now I do. Um, so I did throw a big EP release party in January with the Moody release. Mm -hmm. um, so there I was able to like meet a lot of people in person. Mm -hmm. In terms of online interaction, I personally don't like, value it as much i that might be like a really shitty answer but i think i would rather um wait till we can meet in person mm -hmm. um when it comes to like you know meeting fans and stuff like that um in terms of like content that's more like personal and stuff uh i've i've been saying for years that i'm gonna start vlogging because i have a really big personality so mm -hmm. it, it makes so much sense for me too mm -hmm. i think um Part of it is kind of like fear, if I'm being honest. Like, people watch my music, but what if no one watches my blog? Like, like there is a little bit of insecurity in that area, um, which is stupid because people have always shown up for me and I have no reason to feel that way. Um, so, you know, potentially, but at this point, I'm not sure. I, I keep, I, I've told people I'm going to start vlogging for so long that I don't want to keep lying. So I'm not going to say anything. Um, sh taking a shift into the interview, you know, K-pop has had a lot of online events more recently. And mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot more Korean artists who are putting themselves out there. And yeah. we're just seeing more and more content being released, especially now that, you know, we're all stuck home or, you know, we're limited in terms of our options of like being able to interact with our favorite artists and stuff like that. So are there any Korean artists, whether they're in K-pop, R&B, hip hop, um, ha that have caught your eye as of lately? Um, so interestingly enough, one reason why I 
don't like do my own live streams and stuff like mm-hmm. that is because I don't find them very interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I haven't indulged in any artists um, except for BTS, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they did uh, Bang Bang Con like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a month ago ish. Um, mm-hmm. So aside from, but even that was like older like concerts and like stuff that I like already seen, but that's okay. Um, in terms of like newer artists or American artists, no, I don't know. I feel like I am definitely visually most interested in seeing K-pop artists just because like they put on an entire production. Mm-hmm. When it comes to American artists, well, my preference is more like chill music. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not, that's not like interesting for me to watch. I like to listen to it, but for me, then I can just listen to it on a streaming platform. So mm-hmm. I, uh, I don't feel the need to like divide my time up into like actively watching a stream and then listening to it. Um, so yeah, I think that also shows just how deeply in love with BTS I am. <laughs> like anything they do, I'm I'm there. I've done it. I've seen it. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's 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 interesting. I think all roads for me lead to BTS. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Hey, we're all fangirl of something. I totally agree with you. Oh um, yeah. Has there any been or ha- is there any releases like just even just catching up on music? whether it be here in America or in the K-pop realm that have caught your attention and something that you're like, yeah, I'm jamming out to this a lot. Yeah. So, um, oh God, I don't know if they released this during quarantine. I think it was right before, but it's the wannabe. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Like mm-hmm. I was so mad because um, like the, the choreo, like the shoulder move is so iconic and crazy. I wanted to cover it with a girl group so badly. And I'm so mad because, um, right after that was released, it was stay at home orders and like, you know, we're not meeting yeah. people. I was like, ah, I lost my freaking opportunity. Mm-hmm. So that made, that broke my heart, but it was a crazy comeback. Proud of them. Um, Blackpink did release a song. It wasn't as much of a fan of that <laughs> same with twice actually i don't know i i don't think the 2020 comebacks are very strong in my opinion mm-hmm. it might be but i do have this like problem where i get like so obsessed with like the old stuff that mm-hmm. like i can't um sink in the let the new stuff sink in like i'm still on do 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 this one i don't know mm-hmm. but uh yeah i i wasn't too in love with uh those two girl groups comebacks but um i was very proud of itzy like Mm -hmm. those girls are gonna go so far and uh that's that song has been keeping me busy on spotify for sure oh for sure i totally understand i mean are there any rookie groups or like newer artists that you're like oh i'm 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 watching you yeah the only rookie group i really pay attention to is itzy Mm -hmm. because oh and txt okay i love txt but you know they have the affiliation with bts so Mm -hmm. but i i love subin and young (laughs) jim hey hey we all love a fangirl okay we support fangirls in this house okay (laughs) literally every every variety show my eyes are just glued over there (laughs) in that direction but Mm -hmm. hey you know you know i'm pretty sure they're like 17 but it's okay (laughs) big sister's always watching out that's how i like that's how i like to say it that's right Um, that's right uh, um yeah so those are the two rookie groups i pay attention to mm -hmm. uh the other ones all honestly kind of blend together for me Mm -hmm. which is is a bit sad but um yeah i don't know i i think i just like heavily heavily stand bts Mm -hmm. so much like i can't be that big of a fan of a, a a guy group um, no, for like yeah. XT. I don't know. I'm too loyal. And then for girl groups, I love like Blackpink and Twice. But you know, oh, and Itzy. And aside from that, it's just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I mean, hey, you like what you like, and that's totally fine. So my next question is: Are there any? I mean, how would you ever feel about ever getting the chance to collaborate with Itzy? 
Like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. I mean, I would be very scared because mm-hmm. they're, they have hardcore dancers in their group. Mm-hmm. Like, like, they're all good. Even, you know, people consider Leah, you know, a weaker link. And she is. But to keep up with those girls means you're a good dancer. And she is a good dancer. So I, I feel like I would be like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, because um, I think I've, like, seen a lot of interviews and read a lot online that said, like, Yeji and um, I think it was Yuna are like they like learn really quickly and stuff like i would be so scared to dance with them but i would 100 percent collab like they're so funky like Mm -hmm. they they do all out choreography that like it's it's all their choreo is hard there it's all hard um to a point where i haven't fully learned one of their choreos yet because they scare me but um yeah i would absolutely collab with them if i ever had the chance to or how would you feel about, um, because my next question is like, is there any artist that you'd either like to collab with or create music with or even create music for? I know in the past you have actually created quite a few pieces um, out there. So if anybody um, who is somebody who you'd like to collab with in that way, whether it just be, you know, in a music video or a performance or writing or even just on a track. Okay. I got this. I just answered this question with someone. So for K-pop artists, it would be BTS is number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love GD, actually. Mm-hmm. To, to do like a, a like vocal and rap track with him would be, would be nuts. Um, also, my mother CL, if we did like a, like a bad, bad girl mm-hmm. uh, collab, mm-hmm. that would be crazy. Um, and again, Blackpink, cause I dress like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about it. But you know, I think the, the visual would fit, um, in terms of American music, it's actually interesting because my taste in K-pop and my taste in, um, like songs in English mm-hmm. is so different. Mm-hmm. Like in K-pop, I like the bangers and like, uh-huh. Makes sense because almost all title tracks are just hardcore bangers. But then when it comes to American music, I love chill, like dreamy voices. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't like hardcore American music. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I don't. I just don't like it. Um, but if I could collab with an with American artists, it would be um, Sabrina Claudio, Elena Baraz mac ayers and daniel caesar those are four and they're all like very soothing voices like Mm -hmm. pretty songs like yeah i would i would love a collab with them definitely gonna have to add that to my library what are some 2020 goals for the rest of 2020 i should say what are some goals for you for the rest of the year well um honestly i don't have high expectations for the end of the year Mm -hmm. um and and honestly, you can only do so much right. uh, from online. I think maybe from this point on, things might switch and the culture might switch mm-hmm. to uh, where, you know, online meetups or whatever are more accessible. But at this point, I don't think they're the most uh, convenient. Uh, however, so honestly, like I don't have the most high expectations for the end of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm big on live performance. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm so heartbroken because summer is, is performance season. Summer right. is show season. Like this is literally when it happens. Um, so one of the, one of my big goals is actually to be a festival performer. So okay. even if it's, you know, I think next year is kind of soon to expect this, but I think it is, could definitely easily very well be in my future just because of the type of performer I am mm-hmm. uh, so like you know Coachella mm-hmm. um, you know, like so, 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 something like that I would love to be um, a performer I mean I think Coachella is a big one but South by Southwest you know I would love to be um, one of the performers at um, one of those bigger festivals uh, and I think honestly right now for 2020 even though I'm not really you know, that's not possible. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm not really mm-hmm. planning any 
anything um, that's too out of the box. I think it's good because I do have time to look internally. Um, for instance, a lot of Basically, everything you've seen me do this thus far has been 100% me. Like, mm-hmm. I found the opportunity. I found the person. The idea was born from my brain. I, I put this together. I did this. Like, I did all of it, 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, I'm realizing that teams are a good thing. And um, I have, I've had people uh, reach out more recently about, like, um, you know, uh, blogging about my music or, you know, I had someone reach out and say, she, you know, she wants to be my assistant uh, just to learn about the uh, industry, but also, you know, and gain some experience for her, but also help me out, which is cool, you know, just to have somebody um, be on my side because I don't have a team. I don't have a manager. I'm completely independent. Uh-huh. Um, and while I don't honestly want to sign to a label because uh, I I really respect and appreciate my creativity. Just like Chance the Rapper, it is possible. Um, I do want a manager or like somebody I can confide in um, who can kind of like guide me, who has more connections. So I think um, while there aren't any big projects this year um, that I'm thinking of, I do think it's good for good that I have the time to take a step back and look internally, maybe create a team um, and create more of a skeleton uh, for my artistry that will eventually um, create more productivity, you know, better music, higher quality productions and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm glad for this time. I always try to see, you know, what I can be grateful for in a situation. So um, that's where I'm at for now. But my big dreams are still there. Yes, we manifest oh, all of me. the dreams. Yes, yes, that's we right. manifest these dreams um, as we are wrapping up this interview. Thank you so much, Alice, for taking the time to have this interview with us. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, so I know as of this recording for this interview, Smoke It Out is not released just yet, but definitely um, – if you can just talk a little bit more about Smoke It Out and your future releases and definitely something for our readers and your followers to look forward to if you want to tell them now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So I think so far my music has, you know, it it has communicated a message, but I think the message has been very, uh, hmm. Take your time. you can call it aggressive, but I think it's just been very like, I'm a do me, which is true. And, you know, I always will. But I think there's more to be said. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, I've made that particular message very clear. Um, but there are a lot of things I uh, care about and a lot of things I want to communicate. Um, so for this one, I'm so glad I had the opportunity to write about something that isn't love it's not about me (laughs) it's not about um you know i mean it my experiences are involved but it's not you know a song about my life it's a song that can affect and impact everybody and in the end you know what what is an artist if you're only self-serving and so uh it's i'm grateful that i had the opportunity to write a song like this um that kind of just puts things into perspective and encourages a culture that is inclusive, um, that sees past, you know, social constructs. Um, I am dipping into, you know, a different sound for the next release. I'm probably going to stop it right there so I don't say too much. But yeah, I'm definitely dipping into a new sound. Um, And I'm really excited about that because one thing I will say is uh, I have a heart. So First and foremost, I'm a musician. Um, I went to Berkeley College of Music, so like I have a whole degree. Like I'm, I'm not just like, oh, I think I, I think I want to be an artist, grab mm-hmm. a mic and write things. Like no, like I have like a musical brain that I don't think I've shown as much as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the the upbeat pop stuff is fun and all and it's catchy and it's what's trending and it's what's popular but i do want to be able to showcase some of my musicality which is really important to me um so i think that's the goal with the next one um 
And the release after that, yeah, I have a game plan. The release after that uh, is going to be a very personal story. Um, and I, how shall I phrase this? It's, it involves um, sort of a confusion of identity. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, uh, you'll, yeah, actually I'm going to stop it right there. Um, but, but when it comes out, we'll know. You, yeah. When it comes out, you'll know. Um, I'm trying to make the uh, music video very cinematic. Uh, it'll paint the picture very clearly. Um, I'll make sure I get in touch with you. Uh, yeah, so definitely. You, For sure. Yeah, so you can see, you know, like exactly what I meant by a con confusion of identity. Um, so yeah, and I think just moving forward, I want to talk about things that people don't um, don't talk about as uh, as oh my gosh as frequently. Mm -hmm. So okay, and you know what? Actually, I'm gonna expand on my last one. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it. So when I say uh, confusion of identity, it's like um, you know, growing up a church girl, and then oh, yeah. you know. You know, I come here and I'm more free, you know, mm -hmm. in the things I wear and what I post. And, you know, I still feel like the same person, but I'm getting all this judgment. Mm -hmm. But then when I was a church girl, it was like, oh, you're so prude. You're so whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of like, like, I'm just me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever's on the outside shouldn't dictate what you feel about my character because on the inside my heart has always been the same and i think um that song is just going to explore a lot of the pain i felt um just from being judged by a community who i wanted to love me and um just my experience going through that because that is something i dealt with uh, when i moved to la so yeah and but that's not something anybody makes a song about or I'm sure it exists somewhere, but um, yeah, like that's something that people do struggle with and I want to talk about it. So that's going to be the goal moving forward, just to um, bring light to topics that are, aren't as frequent in our popular music. Spoiler alert for our viewers. <laughs> so definitely thank you again, Alice. For those who are watching this video, where can they find you? How can they follow you? Where can everybody just be like, where's Alice? Where can I where can I get her content? Check it out. So hold on, let me show you my puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, pup, 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 pup. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we'll do this with Happy. This is my Shorty. She's a Shih Tzu Yorkie. <laughs> All right, Happy, you ready? We're going to tell them where we're going to find Mommy. <laughs> so you can find me on Instagram at alpal with five L's. So that's A-L-P-A-L-L-L-L-L. -L 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 -L. And then, um, see, uh, I haven't done a good job at uh, – of making my usernames the same because apparently everybody has my name. So um, on Spotify, uh, you can find me under just Alice. Um, to make the search easier, you can type in one of my um, song titles. So you could be like Alice Playground and I'll show up. I know, I gotta, I gotta unify these things somehow. And then um, you can also find me on YouTube at Alice A Official. And then my Facebook page is Alice A N Official. Ain't that right, baby? <laughs> oh, no, no puppers. And she's so funny. She's so cute. I love her eyes. Thank you. No <laughs> puppers, pup pups. Anyways, thank you so much, Alice, for taking the time to have this interview with us. For those who are watching, whether it be before or after the release, check out Alice's upcoming single, Smoke It Out, on coming out on July 31st. It's going to be available on all platforms? All platforms, yes. All platforms. <laughs> all right. So you can definitely check her out. Thank, thank you again, Alice, for taking the time. On behalf of The Craze Magazine, we thank you and we appreciate you. And we'd love to talk to you in the future once again. So definitely let us know. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It's always so good to talk to you. I love your energy. Uh, so thank you. We make a great team. Uh, ah, yeah. thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, and peace out to the craze. Bye. All right. Let me stop.